So the memory allocation system call is how we get contiguous blocks of memory on the heap, but to get a contiguous block of memory on the stack, we declare arrays. An array is declared like a variable, but after the name you put in square brackets the size, that is the number of elements in the array. So here for instance we're declaring an array of floats called jack, and the size 8 means that this block of memory is the size of 8 floats. Here we declare an array called jill of 200 chars, so it's effectively 200 bytes in size. The name of the array is effectively a pointer value pointing to the first byte of the array. So jack here is effectively a float pointer pointing to the first byte of that array, and jill is a char pointer pointing to the first byte of that array. Notice that I called them values, not variables. They are not variables. You cannot assign to jack. You cannot assign to jill. You can dereference them. You can do point arithmetic. But that's it. You can't assign to them. So here we declare an array i of 32 ints and an array c of 11 chars. Because the name i is effectively an int pointer value, we can assign it to an int pointer p, or we can dereference it. So here we assign the int value negative 6 to the dereference of i. So assuming an int is 4 bytes, this is assigning the value negative 6 to the first 4 bytes at the block of memory pointed to by i. Then if we assign 8 to the dereference of i plus 1, we are assigning 8 to effectively the second 4 bytes in the block of memory pointed to by i. Finally, if we cast the int value 5 to a char and assign it to the dereference of c plus 7, we are writing the value 5 to the 8th byte in the block of memory pointed to by c. So now let's write a function that takes in a block of integers and returns the sum of all of those integers. First of all, the function is going to return an integer value, so we just return int. Second, we need a parameter for accepting the pointer to the start of the block, which might be in the form of an array or something allocated with malloc. Third, we need a parameter that takes in the number of ints in the block. Just from the pointer itself, our function can't tell how big the thing actually is, so that's why we need this number. At the top of our function, we declare two ints, one i, which is going to be the counter for our loop, and one called sum, which is ultimately going to be what we return. Both of these start off with a value 0. In any case, our loop has the condition i less than n, and in each iteration of the loop, first we dereference r, the array, plus i, which in the first iteration is going to be 0. So in the first iteration, we're getting the first int in the block, and then we add that to sum, which at the start is 0. So sum now has the same value as the first int in the block. And then we increment i by 1 and repeat the loop. In the second iteration, we effectively add the second int to sum. And then in the third iteration, we add the third int to sum, and so forth. Until eventually we run out of ints to add, we exit the loop and return sum. So when we call sum, we might do so with an array. Here we declare an array of 30 ints and then we assign values to those ints, and then call sum passing in a, which remember is a pointer value, and we pass in 30. We don't have to pass in an array though, we can allocate here a block of 20 ints, then we presumably give values to those ints, and then we call sum with the argument b, and then 20. So that's an example of passing a block into a function, but what if we want to pass a block out? Well here's something you definitely shouldn't do. The function fred here is returning a pointer pointing to an array declared within fred. The problem is that the array is in the stack frame of fred, such that when fred returns, that memory no longer exists. Or more accurately, what happens is that the very next time uh, functions are called, that stack frame gets overwritten. So at the very least, you can't rely upon this array. Its data is going to get messed with by any succeeding function calls. And in fact, on some platforms, attempting to use that array once Fred has returned is going to cause an error, because all or part of the array extends beyond the top of the stack. And on some platforms, when a process attempts to access beyond the top of its stack, that's a memory access violation. So the lesson is that you should never return an array you've allocated in a function out of that function. Instead, you want to actually allocate on the heap a block of memory, and you can safely pass that out of the function. The only concern in this case is that anyone who calls Fred is responsible for deallocating the block that gets passed out.